So hopefully everyone has heard of Python before. It's programming language. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry, man. <laughs> um, so my interest from it just came from, you know, you hear about it a lot um, uh, for scripting and such. And um, I just was kind of interested in learning another language. So I just kind of looked into it, and it's grown from there. So that, that kind of got me into it. So why Python? There's a ton of standard libraries and third-party extensions for it due to its popularity. So there's, you could use it for pretty much anything you want. Um, and it's easy to use because of that. And the language itself is actually designed to be extremely clean and really simple to use and get, get rolling with it. So here's an example. Of, I pulled this from TOB. This is they rank languages every year. And you can see Python came in at number eight for the last two Februarys. Uh, index was at eight for last year and this year. This is another one. This is Olo. And they. Uh, go around open source projects and kind of collect metrics on different languages and projects that are out there. And so uh, here's a spattering of popular languages you probably all heard of. And uh, you can see Python is this one right down here that's kind of inching its way up um, over 2005 to 2013 is what's shown there. So um, it's also used in a lot of different places. So uh, Django is an example of a web framework, kind of like Ruby on Rails that uh, uses Python, is written in Python. LibreOffice, I don't know if anyone's heard of that, that's a replacement for Microsoft Office Suite, and they're actually rumored to be rewriting it all in Python and getting rid of the, the Java, I think was the original implementation of it. Um, Dropbox is their protocol that they use is implemented in Python for um, synchronizing files across the network. Google leans very heavily on it. I've read that their, uh, their search engine was originally, has big bits of Python within it, as well as uh, YouTube, which they now own, was originally written heavily in Python. Um, of course, you have other languages creeping in there, too. And then the Raspberry Pi is actually adopt, has adopted Python as their platform language choice. So um, if you play with the Raspberry Pi, you're probably going to do it in Python. OK, so Python is easy. So very low barrier to entry, and there's not much code needed to get the, the job done. So I'll just run through a quick little example here. This is your standard Hello World program that you might do in Java early on in school. So you have to declare your class, name it the same exact thing as your file. Uh, you need this public static void main um, method that you might not really understand what that means when you're starting out, but they, everyone just tells you, don't worry about it, just put it in there, we'll get it later. <laughs> and, then, um, and then, of course, your Hello World print line, which you see the word print in there, but maybe if you're a beginner, you're not positive what that's about. But when you then figure out how to compile it and then run it, then you're good and you'll see Hello World come out. So with Python, um, this is the same pro program. You just do print Hello World. Um, you don't have to name the file the same. You don't have to run, run it through a compiler. You just type Python and give the name of your file. And you'll get the same output as all that Java code over there. Is that Python 2 or Python 3 style? That is 3, I believe. I don't think you need the parentheses in two. So there's an interactive shell built into Python that comes with it. And so I'll just run through another example here. So you just type Python on your command line to get it started. And it gives you these uh, lines that you can program. And so in this example, I'm going to open a file, test.txt. For the W means I'm going to write to it. And then you see I want to try writing something out to the file. So I call write line. But that's not actually the method they used to write. But luckily, the interactive shell is forgiving, tells you something's wrong with it. So it doesn't crash out on you. You don't have to recompile or anything like that or um, go back into your editor to do it. You can just simply reuse your handle to the file object, write hello world, write some other stuff, close it. And then you can see here, I exit and I cat the file up to the command line and the contents are written to the file. So pretty easy. I'm not. I didn't write the example for how to do that in Java, but I think it's probably a little more complicated than that and <laughs> higher barrier for beginners if they want to play around with it. Okay. So Python is clean and powerful. So here is an example of a for loop in Python. Um, I gave it a range object, which is just the numbers. It's either 0 or 1 to 10. It's just going to print out each of those numbers. And the cool thing about Python is you don't have to use uh, curly braces. So everything is white space. <coughs> Uh, white space defines your code block. So you'll just use tabs to, de to define how, um, how far a block of code goes. And that's nice for the clean code aspect because 
lots of fights about formats and such. You know, you know, with the is the Tories on this line or the next line or where, where they go. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Here's another simple example I did. This is using a third-party library, URL lib, and I just pulled Google a Git request to uh, Google.com, and then print print out the response, which I don't show here because it's just HTML code. But uh, that's a pretty easy example. And again, I don't know doing that in Java would probably be a little more arduous, but you get the point. So what else? So Python has been called the new Perl. I don't know if people know what Perl is, but it's kind of like a utility language, a lot of glue code. There was a quote out there I read, something about Perl being the duct tape that holds the internet together. <laughs> so a lot of people now are using Python kind of the way that you would use Perl before, just because it's a lot easier. Uh, it's not as ugly. I've never read Perl, but that's what I've read. Um, and then there's also a rise of it in the science data analytics realm. So um, there's a language called R out there, which a lot of people like doing statistics and such will uh, use to crunch numbers. And it's again, it's um, some of these libraries like SciPy and NumPy make that barrier to entry nice and low, so that a beginner can come in and do some of the things that you might have to, you know, work with R for a long time to really learn, pick up, and and be good at. So to learn more. There's a website out there called Code Academy. This is one of the websites that I originally went to, and they have a really nice interactive shell online and lessons that will give you kind of a basic overview of the syntax and different uses of the language and some fun use cases, too, besides just printing out Hello World. Um, during the furlough, that was it, two years ago now, 2013, Jason, Jim, and I started writing a poker engine, and we didn't get super far on it, so if anyone wants to pick that up, I can invite you to the uh, repository, and you can work on that. Um, interestingly enough, when we were at OzCon this past year, a couple of us got a book on Flask, which is a microservice um, framework for Python. So the author was there signing the book, so uh, I picked that up and played with it a little bit. And it's pretty easy to go and write a RESTful endpoint or something like that. Uh, and another one is if you're ever thinking you might need to use a bash script to solve a problem. You know, a lot of us work on Linux systems, you could reach for Python instead. Um, maybe a little easier to learn if you haven't used Bash before. And another note here, these are some uh, development environment options. So I originally started playing with PyDev, which is an Eclipse plugin, but PyCharm is by JetBrains, and Lloyd told me about that, and that one's a lot nicer to use, so I'd recommend using one of those too. You can also use the interactive shell to get the basics though. So that's it. Does anyone have any questions?